Welcome to the English version of the Pulse Multimedia YouTube channel. Here I regularly post interesting reviews about DIY, electronics, and various useful devices. Subscribe to see more of my videos. Всем привет, меня зовут Сергей. Hi guys and welcome. My name is Sergey. Today I will show you a review of the Sky RC charger. The model is called B6 Nano Duo. Nano Duo. Nano Duo. The name is strange, it looks like Japanese. This device has several modifications, small and big, without built-in power supply and with internal power supply. There are different versions. Let's find out if it's worth buying. The box is beautiful. Here, for some reason, a little girl is depicted looking at the sunset. Written tiny, but mighty. It's hard to agree. The power of the device is only 200 watts. That's not a lot. You can download the smartphone app and control the charger remotely via Bluetooth. I don't understand why this is needed. Everything is better with Bluetooth. Input voltage 100 to 240 volts. The device can be operated from any outlet. There is no connector for power supply from an external battery. The total power is 200 watts, but the device is two channel. Only 100 watts per channel. Discharge power 8 watts. It is very sad. Charge current up to 15 amps. Discharge current up to 3 amperes. Discharge power is low. Therefore, we will not be able to, for example, discharge an 18 volt battery with a current of 3 amperes. But here is a good current for balancing. 1 amp per cell. Lithium batteries can be charged from 1 to 6 cells. Please note that SkyRC is releasing charges today that do not support single cell batteries. Make no mistake when buying. In the box we see the charger and power cable. It's good that there is a ferrite filter. This is a very generous set. That's why we have instructions. Instruction in English. There are pictures. The pages below have a QR code. You can scan it and follow the link to the video instruction from SkyRC. The device is nice. Not big size. Here is a classic bottle of Coca-Cola 500 milliliters. I like the strict design. Large screen, which is sealed with a protective film. It's strange why the box shows a girl. In my opinion, the design is masculine. There are no physical buttons, only touch keys, they don't move. Lots of holes for ventilation. There are contacts for balancing and power connectors. At the bottom you can see a small radiator. Judging by its size, the device has weak power. All my hope for two stars. More precisely, these are two coolers that are located at the back, and there is a power connector. Bottom rubber feet. This indicates the high quality of the device. There are chargers that only imitate rubber feet. But the B6 Nano Duo holds up well to the table. At the bottom there is a sticker with the parameters. In general, I like the look. The device is nice. The design is reminiscent of stealth technology. It's good that the wire is the most common. You can use a cable from audio video equipment. The screen is weird. Similar to LCD. But can't display any image. The screen can only display predefined characters. From different angles, the screen glows faintly, but in general the image is clearly visible. The matte screen is a protective film. I won't take it off. Therefore, sometimes you will notice stripes on the screen. It's not a screen problem. The color of the numbers is white. A white glow can be seen in the ventilation holes. The main advantage of the device is the absence of a menu, so says SkyRC. I agree. It is convenient when all parameters are visible on the screen. I like that I can see battery voltage. You don't have to press any buttons to see it. The voltmeter on the main screen is the main advantage of this charger. I want to measure how accurately the internal voltmeter works. 
In a 18650 battery, the SkyRC device detects a voltage of 4.09 volts. Multimeter rich meters 409B shows 4.12 volts. The voltage deviation was three hundredths of a volt. That's not a lot, but there is an inaccuracy. Let's look at port number two. We see 4.10 volts. Deviation two hundredths of a volt. Not perfect, but it's a good result. I don't like that the two ports have different voltages. It is not right. Apparently the charger was poorly calibrated at the factory. First port, 4.10 volts. Second port, 4.09 volts. Please note that the battery is connected and the voltmeter shows voltage, but the percentage charge indicator shows zero. Percentage display does not work in real time. The indicator displays data only at the moment of charging or discharging the battery. Channel 1 and 2 switching is performed by a separate button. Are these touch buttons easy to use? It's hard to answer. I didn't notice any advantages or disadvantages. I would like to say super, but in reality, nothing special. Pressing works clearly and it's good. What can we set up here? Four kinds of lithium batteries, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium and lead acid batteries. Then you can select the number of cells from 1 to 6. Now you can select the operating mode of the device. Balance charge, normal charge, discharge, and storage mode. Storage mode cannot be used with NIMH and NICAD batteries. If I change the type of battery, then that storage mode will disappear. Now you can complete three tasks. Charge, discharge, and cycle. The number of cells for nickel metal hydride batteries can be specified up to 15. I'll try to discharge the lithium battery. I'll set it to 2 amps. It's bad that you cannot specify the end voltage of the discharge. What is the default value? Unclear. Okay, let's get started. As you can hear, the fan turned on. This is bad. So there is no temperature sensor. We see the display of the percentage of battery charge. The animation shows that the discharge process is in progress. Discharge current 2 amps for single cell batter. The device is working successfully. Now I want to show you the very serious problems of this charger. Watch carefully. I want to perform a storage function. At the end of this procedure, the battery voltage should be 3.85 volts. Now the voltage on it is 4.08 volts. This is about 80% of the charge. The storage operation discharges or charges the battery, depending on its initial state. I set the current to 1 amp in storage mode. But I have a question. Is this current for discharge or charge? This is not clear. I cannot understand what this current parameter is responsible for. It is not comfortable. In reality, this is the charge current. But how to adjust the current for the discharge? To enter the discharge current for the storage mode, you must switch the device to the discharge mode. And here we set the desired value of the discharge current. Okay, so be it. I switch to discharge mode and set the current to 2 amperes. This value will be applied in storage mode. Thus, the storage mode settings are as follows. The charge is carried out with a current of 1 ampere. The discharge is carried out with a current of 2 amperes. Now an important note. When the charger approaches 3.85 volts, which is 60% charged, the charger should reduce current. This is how classic storage mode works in the right chargers. It is very important. The device should gradually reduce the current. This algorithm allows you to put the battery in a storage state. It's 60% charged. In this case 3.85 volts. What What's going on in the B6 Nano Duo? It does not know how to smoothly reduce the current in storage mode. Therefore, when starting the storage mode, the device turns on the full load on the battery, 2 amperes. The battery voltage drops sharply. The charger should reduce the current, but it doesn't. Instead of reducing the current, the device stops discharging and reports that the battery has been put into storage mode. In reality, this is not so. When the load is disconnected, the battery voltage will increase again. Let's watch the slow motion video again. The current increases uncontrollably. The voltage drops sharply. The process stops. Written done. 
Instead of a smooth decrease in current, the storage operation ends ahead of schedule. Battery not brought to 60% charge. A good charger will always reduce the current closer to 3.85 volts. The storage process should end with a current of about 200 or 100 milliamps. That would be right. But in SkyRCB6, the storage function does not work correctly. The device cannot achieve a constant battery voltage of 3.85 volts. See how the device from HTRC does it right. This is strange, because the B6 can discharge batteries with a small current. For example 100 milliamps, but it can't do it automatically. This is a huge disadvantage of the B6 Nano Duo. But let's not stop. I will try charging a Makita 18 volt battery. I connected the wires to port number 2 and set the current to 4 amps. Everything works as it should. The device produces a current of 4 amperes. A very loud fan comes on immediately. I like the screen. All main parameters are clearly visible. It's bad that the battery percentage information is reset when I stop the device. The big drawback is the low power per discharge. Yes, I can discharge a 18650 battery with 2 amps. But I cannot discharge the Makita 18 volt battery with a large current. I will try to set 3 amps. But the device is only capable of 400 milliamps. This means that I will discharge such a battery for a very long time. The charge current can be set up to 15 amperes. But the actual charge current will correspond to the power of the device. 100 watts per channel. For an 18 volt battery, the charge current will be a maximum of 5 and a half amperes. Let's see how the internal ammeter works. It is very important. The quality of this function depends on how accurately we can measure the battery capacity. Let's check the accuracy of the current when charging. I put 100 milliamps. The multimeter shows 67 milliamps. It doesn't look like 100 at all. I will try to put a current of 300 milliamps. And again failure. The real charge current is 247 milliamps. When charging, measuring the current is not very important. This mode does not measure battery capacity. This error does not affect the quality of the battery charge. But when discharging, it is very important to measure the current as accurately as possible. If the amateur does not work correctly, then we will get incorrect battery capacity values. Now I will check everything for you. I'm going into discharge mode. I set the load current to 100 milliamps. Real load 130 milliamps. This is not good. I will try the 300 milliamp setting. Oh, look. Exactly 300 milliamps. Or not. Let's see what happens. Unfortunately, the current gradually decreases. I would like to test the amateur with a load current of 1 amp, but this will not work with an 18 volt battery. Not enough power B6. It is only 8 watts per discharge. To test the load current of 1 amp I take a single cell battery type 18650. Very strange. I set the current to 1 amp. But the device shows that it is using 900 milliamperes current. The voltage on the battery is sufficient for a load of 1 ampere. Moreover, the real value of the load is 930 milliamps. It's a complete mess. Okay, I'll try 1.5A current. And again B6 uses less current than I configured. Although the readings on the screen correspond to the actual load. I'll try to put even more, 3 amperes. For 3 amps, the device does not have enough power. It can only use 2.4 amps. But still, the actual load current does not match what B6 shows on its screen. I don't know how to comment on this. Sometimes the current is accurate, but most of the time it is not correct. I have seen other devices from SkyRC, which have a much higher accuracy of the amateur. For example, the SkyRC T200 works very well. A review of this cool charger will be released on my channel soon. Subscribe so you don't miss the video. I decided to try again. Give B6 Nano Duo another chance. Maybe the wrong value is displayed on the screen, but in fact, the processor knows exactly what current is being used. 
This is how the EV Peak Charger works. A detailed review of this device will soon be released on my channel. Subscribe so you don't miss this video. I decided to test a 12 volt battery from a Bosch tool. I first tested its capacity on the Sky RCT200. We see 1290 mAh. Later I charged the battery again and discharged it with the same current on the Sky RCB6. It turned out 1423 mAh. The capacitance value is too high. B6 is wrong when measuring the battery. It may seem that the battery is better than it really is. Let's see what voltage will be on the battery after the charging process is completed. When charging, the voltage rises more than 4.2 volts, but many devices do this. This contributes to faster battery charging. When the charge is over, the display shows 100%. We see the voltage value exactly 4.2 volts. Is it really? In reality, the voltage is lower, but within normal limits. An indicator that shows 4.2 volts does not function as a voltmeter at this moment. This is just an indicator of at what voltage the charge ends. In reality, the voltage of this battery is 4.17 volts. This is a very good result. Now I will talk about the ability to control the charger from a smartphone. I'm not sure it was a good idea. Management takes place via Bluetooth. SkyRC has several models with this feature. I personally think this is a completely useless feature on any charger, but you may not agree with me. On the other hand, for B6 this function is absolutely necessary. It gives access to the settings of the charger. After all, as we remember, there is no menu on the main screen of the B6. The main parameters of B6 are duplicated on the smartphone. Nothing new. Temperature data has just been added. There is a proprietary SkyRC function called Scan2Go. Some users don't understand how it works. Let me tell. As planned by SkyRC engineers, by pressing a special button you can start the charging process very quickly. First you need to create and save settings for charging your battery. Specify the type of battery, number of cells, current and cutoff voltage. Press the Save button and your setting is saved as a shortcut function. Each such entry has an individual QR code. You can save the QR code as an image. Print it out on a printer and stick it on your battery. When you want to charge this battery, press the Scan to Go button and use your smartphone's camera to scan this QR code. When you do this, the device will instantly start the charging process with the desired parameters. In my opinion, this is all complicated and inconvenient. To charge the battery, you will need a smartphone and Bluetooth pairing. I'm curious to know if anyone uses this feature? Write in the comments. On the other hand, I am grateful to SkyRC for developing new ideas. Engineers are moving forward and that's good. Without the QR code, the process starts as usual. Choose the type of battery, the number of cells and so on. All these settings can be configured without a smartphone. If you click plus, then we will see additional options. For lithium batteries, this is the cutoff voltage. When discharging, you can specify the end voltage of the discharge. Note that the default here is 3.15 volts. This is not entirely correct. This means that my Bosch test battery was not fully discharged on the B6. In Sky RCT200 I discharged it to 3 volts. If I had discharged the Bosch battery to 3 volts here, the difference in capacity would have been even greater. Compared to Sky RCT200. For nickel metal hydride batteries, you can also configure advanced settings. Minimum voltage per cell. Order of execution of the cycle function. It means cyclic charge and discharge. Number of cycles, drip charge current, delta peak cutoff. For lead acid batteries, the available modes are charge, AGM, cold, and discharge. I don't use lead acid batteries, so I don't know what cold means in this context. The most interesting thing will be if you press the plus button. We get just a blank screen. There is nothing here. Probably the cutoff voltage cannot be adjusted here. The process starts like this. On the smartphone screen, we see everything the same as on the B6 itself. Why you need a smartphone is not clear. 
In the app, you can edit the device's system settings. Do you think there are many of them? The first item is the device name. What for? Further safety functions. Time and energy limits. Pause duration in cycle mode. 10 minutes is specified by default. Function of checking the balance connection. The sound of keystrokes and a signal about the end of the process. But there is a problem with this. The B6 has a very loud obnoxious beep. I turn off the sound. There is silence. But the problem is that this setting is not saved after restart. If you turn the device off and on again, all settings are reset to factory values. I'll show you. I will turn off the sound of pressing the buttons. I turn off the power and reconnect. We hear nasty noises again. Even with the help of a smartphone, you can measure the resistance in the battery. Summing up, I don't know why SkyRC made this device. They have better models. I was hoping it would work better. Probably B6 was made for touch buttons and Bluetooth. Why is all this necessary? I don't know. I tried to use this charger several times and couldn't get used to it. I definitely don't like it. A balanced charger that cannot work in storage mode is epic fail. This is where the pain ends. Review on a strange charger. Perhaps someone will like it. Why did such a large company as SkyRC release this crude product? I hoped it would be very convenient. Expected high precision. But this is not here. This concludes my review. I want to remind you that this is the English version of my YouTube channel. Leave a like if you like my reviews. It is very important to me that you subscribe to my channel. This will help create new interesting reviews for you. If you have any questions, write me comments in Russian or English. I will always try to answer you and help with advice. Thank you for watching. Bye.